Are you a gamer who can't get their hands on a new GPU? Don't worry, Intel wants to save you. And Samsung decided saving the fishes and the turtles? Nah, let's dump toxic waste and kill them all. And there's a new fastest GPU in the planet. You wanna know what it is? I'll tell you. You just gotta watch today's episode of Hot News where I go over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And I am your Brett host. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about how Intel wants to save you from that piddly diddly little GPU shortage that's going around because they're saying that they're gonna ship millions millions of these GPUs per year to help alleviate you because it was posted by PC Gamer that Pels, Pat Gelsinger needs to be our only hope out of this nightmarish GPU scenario where we can't get any. At which point Intel's GPU head, Raja Kadori, former AMD GPU head says, hey, this is a huge issue. Okay, we're working hard to find a path towards the mission, getting millions of ARC GPUs into the hands of PC gamers every single year. To which Pat Gelsinger followed up saying, we are on it, I like bonnet on a font. It. I don't know what I'm saying anymore, but don't you worry. Intel wants you to think that they're the saviors of what's going on when it comes to the GPU shortage. Nvidia and AMD, psh, who? Okay, listen, the, the, you need a third party coming in. However, I would just like to point out, despite in Intel's rhetoric here, where it's just like, hey, they're gonna save us. Um, let's look at what's causing the shortage. Yes, obviously there is that, you know, overexposure of demand where miners are trying to buy a whole bunch of GPU but it's been very clearly communicated by many different factors that there's a supply shortage going on. TSMC, Samsung, all of the companies that produce GPUs aren't able to keep up. NVIDIA's on Samsung, so they have their own fabrication stuff going on. AMD is currently using TSMC seven nanometer and six nanometer nodes for their RX 6000 series GPUs. And Intel might actually be able to save us if they were making their own GPUs, but they're not. They're using TSMC just like everybody. The Alchemist series of GPUs are gonna be based on TSMC six nanometers. So they're gonna have the same supply problems that everybody else has. TSMC can't just magically be like, oh, we have a new customer. Yeah, we found this extra fabrication space in the back room. It was over there. Now everybody gets more. No, Intel's taking away from another company here. They like, they're paying more to get this space that's inevitably going to take away from somebody else, especially when there's a crunch and a shortage that's going on right now. So while I wanna have hope, I wanna believe that Intel can save us. Let's just, let's be realistic here and just like, there ain't no backroom space fabrication going on, Intel. How are you gonna do it? But regardless of supply problems that might be happening, we do have more details coming out about the Arc Alchemist GPUs, like the fact that uh, there are benchmarks. It shows that it's better than 3070 Ti, at least according to preliminary benchmarks in Sysoft Chandra, showing that it has a 2.1 gigahertz clock speed. This might be the highest end that Intel goes. Obviously, pricing will really matter here, not even getting to the RTX 3080 for competing at the flagship, but I would take 3070 ETI performance if it meant that it came in at a price point of roughly 500 bucks. That would sit well with me. I would enjoy that and I would like to have that. But Intel also having some more leaks when it comes to their memory, not memory leakage, but a leak of the memory configurations that are gonna be in their DG2 graphics. You can see here the 512 execution unit is gonna have 16 gigs. Their 384 execution unit is gonna have 12 gigs. Their 256 is gonna have eight gigs. And then their low end bad boys are 96 and 128. Execution units are only gonna have four gigabytes of VRAM, which I Obviously, it's not what everybody wants, but on the low end, it likely will be fine as long as they don't pull an AMD and limit it to PCI Express by four lanes. That, that would just, that, why would you do that? I'm still not angry. I'm not angry anymore. I've, I've gotten over it, my friends. So we do have a lot of good indication coming out from Intel that it does look, number one, they're gonna be a serious competitor to AMD and Nvidia. Number two, it does look like memory configurations are gonna be good. Number three, they're at least talking a big game of supply, which is all you can do in pre-hype marketing before these things actually come come out, but you know what's gonna come out of my mouth right now? Today's video is sponsored, which is ButcherBox, my friends. If you like making sure you have high quality meat for your meals, you're trying to make some stuff, ButcherBox should be the way you go. You don't have to go to the grocery store anymore and you get high quality meat delivered directly to your door. Whether it's the 100% grass fed beef, the free range organic chicken, the wild caught seafood, what have you, in the various different boxes that you can get, ButcherBox makes sure that you get high quality meat at a price that's really affordable at less than $6 per meal with free 
free shipping. And again, it's delivered straight to your door. It's packed in a way that things don't melt. And if you forget them outside, like I have in the middle of summer for a day or two, I'm not recommending this, but mine wasn't thawed at that point. They're still kind of frozen, which I, I still ate. It was delicious. Anyways, if you use our link in the video description while signing up for ButcherBox, you can get free ground beef for life. You'll get two pounds of 100% grass-fed, grass-finished beef that in your butcher boxes for the rest of your membership. Two whole pounds of free meat every single freaking month you get butcher box. Check it out at the link in the video description. It makes my life so much easier. This is how we get meat here at the Stickle Monster household, and I hope you would check it out too. And we're gonna check out the price in a crypto stocks. Bitcoin up 2% to be at 38,479. Having a little bit of a Monday rally, not having the Monday blues. It was actually, it had a little bit of a rough start to its Monday, $36,000 over the weekend, but it's kind of clawed itself back up. Ethereum at 26.83, up 4% on the day, and Dogecoin up 1% on the day to be at 14.1 cents. And as I mentioned, the meme stonks, I'm dropping them off of the segment. January was the last time I was gonna do it, January 31st. I'll give you a quick peek, and then this is the last time. I know we didn't release an episode of Hot News yesterday. In case you're wondering, I had a horrible weekend. My, my son had a whole lot of issues that we just had to deal with. I got next to no sleep. It was awful. Here's a good picture of me on the toilet and my pants. Yeah, anyways, <laughs> not like that. So because I didn't give it to you yesterday, this is the last time we're covering meme stunks in Hot News unless something changes. GameStop closing up 10% on the day to be at 107.94 and AMC closing up 5.38% to be at $15.87. But speaking of things that are sewage, waste, that are just completely bad for the environment, the Samsung in Austin, Texas has been found to leak 763,000 gallons of acid waste into the local ecosystem. It accidentally got fed into a stormwater pond, which then get, it went into a tributary, which then reduced the pH of the water to three to four, which which killed all of the aquatic life, or as the report says, that there was virtually no surviving aquatic life that had happened. The Harris Branch Creek not having a lot of good survivability with that. Samsung coming out and saying, hey, we found out about it afterwards, and then we stopped it. And yeah, it was bad that we killed things, but like, I mean, we stopped. The investigators found that Samsung did indeed stop. The pH has allegedly returned to normal at this time, and there's not a whole lot of details as to whether or not Samsung's gonna face a fine for this, what the cleanup efforts are gonna look like, or what exactly is gonna go on after the fact with uh, holding companies, massive companies like this, to account when they actively dump tons of toxic waste into the environment. Maybe it'll just be like, hey, it's Texas, all right? Yeehaw your way through this. Who knows? I'll keep you updated if we hear any more about that. And in case you want to hear about the fastest gaming monitor ever made, 500 hertz, my friends, there. You heard about it, okay? BOE announcing a 27 inch 1080p 500 hertz monitor where they came out with new technology that allows them to get a better oxide semiconductor setup for the display so that it can actually run that quickly. With BOE just saying that this is a proof of concept, likely not going on sale anytime soon, but 500 hertz, one millisecond response time. You can see those pixels just flying by and you can see the money flying by when it comes to video games because Sony decided, hey, Xbox, you just bought Crash Bandicoot and Spyro, our mascots, all right? How about this? We buy the makers of Halo. Sony announcing a $3.6 billion deal to acquire Bungie, who doesn't make Halo anymore. Obviously, 343 Industries is making it, but Bungie known for games like Destiny and Destiny 2, which I don't know if they're any good. But according to reports, Phil Spencer's favorite game, who's the head of Xbox, uh, is Destiny 2. So uh, this might be personal for Sony to get all of this done. With the acquiring of Bungie, it just makes it so that Bungie will have more money from Sony. Hopefully, we'll get better first party titles on so that's kind of all I can hope for here obviously this does make it like a little concerning that all of these massive corporations are just buying out these studios and we're not going to have any independence left that actually can produce like big games I'm kind of scared that we might hear like Xbox bought out CD Projekt Red because they had all of this crap that happened and then Microsoft was like "Ooh, discount 
fire sale. That's free real estate. Give us The Witcher 4. That's going to be Xbox exclusives. I don't know, but according to the reports, Destiny won't become a PlayStation exclusive and future Bungie titles should still be available anywhere people play games, but that could just mean that it's going to be on PlayStation and maybe PC. I really, I don't see Sony allowing these games to go onto Xbox, but we'll, we'll see how this develops in the future. And in case you do like some of Sony's first party games, Gran Turismo 7 is getting its dedicated state of play coming up, the first state of play by Sony in 2022. That's going to be this coming Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific. In case you want to know about this real realistic driving simulator, as it was one of my favorite games growing up. But while all of these game companies are buying out each other's assets and making it so that they're exclusive, Tesla is going the opposite way. They're making their supercharger network available to more non-Tesla vehicles, at least in Europe right now. There was a test that was going on for the trials to see if this would work over in the Netherlands. Now it's been expanded to France and Norway so that there are 20 sites in France, 15 sites in Norway where drivers who don't have Tesla vehicles can pay Tesla for the electricity juice that goes into their cars. And you know what goes into your computer? All right, we talked about earlier how Intel wants to save you from the GPU shortage. I've got a better solution. How about you buy an RX 550? Because apparently they're in reproduction again. Not what I meant, but there are Japanese GPUs that are showing up for $155. These RX 550s, which went out of production a while ago, now showing up as brand new four gigabyte models in case that interests you as all these low profile bad boys. That's that's honestly what I think should save the day. RX 550s, my friends. And you know what's going to save us from not having GPUs? Just looking at the records of bigger GPUs competing faster than ever before. The RX 6900 XT is now the fastest GPU in the world, getting the 3D Mark Firestrike Hall of Fame top score with a 3.1 gigahertz overclock on liquid nitrogen, beating out the previous record holder of four GTX 1080 Ti's. Yes, my friends, and scoring the highest amount of points ever. However, you should note that this likely is because of the fact that they paired it with the 12900K, whereas the previous record of four 1080 Ti's was done with the 10980 XE. And if you just look at the scores, the, the 1080 Ti scored 20,000 more points in the graphics score, whereas when it comes to the 12900K, that scored 16,000 more points in the physics score and 6,000 more points in the combined score, which made it so that the 6900 XT is the fastest. But if you probably put four 1080 Ti's with the 12900K, you're likely also gonna be faster. So we'll see how long this record stands, but the 6900 XT is a fast boy. And I'm so fast that I'm done. I'm over, I finished. It's the end of this episode of Hot News. It, it came quickly. I'll see you tomorrow for more talk news. Tech, tech, tick tock. Oh boy.